Hello everyone, Danny here today to talk to you about Drew Hayes' newest book in the Freddy the Vampire Accountant series, The Fangs of Freelance. Before I get started though, if you're like me and you love audiobooks and you're looking for a good source that will help you decide, hey, is this audiobook for me or not, before you spend the money on the audiobook, subscribe to my channel. It's kind of what I do, you know? So, to the book. This is the third, maybe fourth book in this series, and this is a series that I absolutely love. Now, if you're looking for a series that it is chock full of sword fights and action and, and stuff like that, might not be the series for you. If you're looking for a series that has this almost lighthearted, fun feel to it, and, and does have, you know, a few fights in it, they, they're less with swords, although there, there is a sword in this, and, and the sword actually does play a role, but more with guns and bullets. At the same time, you have dragons and vampires and were creatures. And, and, and demons and half demons and orcs and I mean you you name it they're out there and exist in this world this might be the book for you the narrator um, Kirby Hayborn is an excellent choice for this book series they could not have picked a better narrator than Kirby Hayborn he has this Delivery. Now, now the book is a first-person stories. It's the memoirs of Freddie the Vampire Accountant, Freddie Franklin Fletcher, the Vampire Accountant, and Freddie Franklin Fletcher is this unassuming accountant who was, you know, shy and awkward and in real life. Your stereotypical accountant, the total accountant nerd that's, you know, scared of girls kind of a guy. And he gets turned by a vampire, and the vampire abandons him, expecting him to, like, go crazy and go on this killing spree. And instead, Freddy just wants to be an accountant. So he figures out a way to do accounting at night and, and stuff like that, and slowly works his way into the parahuman world. And because he's different from other vampires, it takes a while for the parahumans to trust him. But when they do trust him, he's he's like, you know, a mover and a shaker. He, he makes friends all over the place because he truly cares about other people. And he's honest and trustworthy. Now, by the time this book comes along in the last book, Freddy, in order to protect someone, had created his own vampire coven. And he is, or, um, I don't, the word's not coven, but anyhow, he, he is the head. He set this up as himself, and his friends all joined. So now he has authority over his friends. A as far as listening to this book around little kids goes, there's the occasional swear word. I like the way the author does it. Oftentimes, an author will set up all of, say, all of the good people in his books with the same moral ambiguity. So either they all swear or none of them swear. Same with the bad guys. That's not the way Drew Hayes does his books. Each of his characters has their own moral ambiguity. So while Freddy wouldn't dream of saying a swear word, it's just not his character, there are people that he associates with that to varying degrees swear. And when I say varying degrees, I mean... I mean I'll say the occasional word that I don't even consider a swear word. I have family members who do consider it a swear word, so I wouldn't say it around them. But we, me and my own family, have varying degrees of what we consider to be appropriate and inappropriate language. And that's the way his friends are. But there is the occasional swear word in there. There is also one scene in particular, which uh, around children, and especially if you have sensitive children, you need to be aware of one of Freddie's friends gets into a fight with some meth heads, um, transforms into his para-human form, kills one of them, 
and then in order to frighten the other, licks the blood off of his face. And it's it's kind of shocking, especially in a book like this where everything has been almost... It's, it's weird because I don't know another book that manages to have action and suspense and still keep this lighthearted of a feeling about... Actually, I do know some other books that are like that, but that's kind of the way it is. So then when something like that happens, it's, it's almost shocking. You get introduced now, if you've listened to the other books, you've learned who, what Crystal's parahuman form is. You, you've learned what Neil's, you know, he's a necromancer. You, you've learned everybody's parahuman form. But there's one character in particular, Arch. Everybody's kind of afraid of Arch. Arch is this really big deal. But you have no clue what his parahuman form is. You, you have yet to see him do anything supernatural. Well, some of his parahuman abilities are revealed in this book. However, they're not fully explained. So Arch is still a mystery. He's almost a bigger mystery because you you know just enough now to make some guesses without them being truly educated guesses. What is he? How do he become what he is? I got kind of an idea. Maybe we'll have to wait for future books to find out. It's the kind of book that leaves you feeling really, really good, keeps you entertained, keeps you coming back for more. It's not a book, for me at least, it's not a book that I can put down in the middle of the story. Now, it's his memoirs. So he will be recalling an event, and that event will end. At that point, I can easily put the book down, walk away, come back to it the next day. But if it's in the middle of an event, the book's too good for me to put down. i got to finish the event before I can put the book down. And there's like three major events that are that he's retelling of his life. If you're the type of person, some people really love first-person books, first-person book first person narrative book is where the person who is the main character in the book is retelling the stories and this is a first person narrative book so if you're the kind of person that loves that you'll love that about it so he retells three major events in his life in this book if you like my channel please subscribe turn on notifications if you like the video hit the like button if you have any questions, comments, feedback, send them my direction. Put them in the comments. I'll get back to you. I promise. But most importantly, if you do nothing else today, make sure that today you listen to at least one really good book. And I definitely, I definitely recommend The Fangs of Freelance by Drew Hayes. Thank you.